<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Aloha Ambe. I'm a PhD student from Queensland University of Technology, Brisbane, Australia. I'm excited to present our work entitled Older People Inventing Their Personal Internet of Things with the IoT Unkit Experience. Uh, most Internet of Things applications focus on efficiency and automation. And in our work with older people who are living independently, we found that these technologies are envisaged for them without giving them a say, such as technologies for remote monitoring in the form of emergency care pendants or automated bill reminders. We ask, um, what about caring IoT that connects, socializes, and empowers? How can we help older people envisage the design of IoT? In this study, we showed participants' example of IoT prototype developed from QUT Lab. First, we showed them the messaging kettle. It is a prototype that connects two remote kettles fostering connections through the routine of making tea. The lava lamp-like glow indicates the counterpart kettle is boiling. This establishes everyday togetherness between family and friends at a distance. We also show the participants the performance apron and talking bottle. The prototype fosters cooking together at a distance through a touch-sensitive apron and a decorative display bottle that glows when the apron senses activity or receives an audio message. But connecting with things can be purely social or it can lead to shared discussion, awareness of, awareness of and caring about the environment. And this is an example of that, the ambient birdhouse. It is an ambient device that facilitates awareness about local birds through engagement with bird calls and bird videos. We wonder, how do we allow people to creatively assemble their networks of things and people uh, with the logic and conditions and mediums of their connection? Kits. Through kits, non-designers are empowered as they are envisioned to invent new forms of technology, such as an IoT that suits their various desires and needs. Using the kit little bits, the top photo shows the workshop conducted with older people to design. But we found two things. First, the participants needed more understanding of IoT and sensors in order for them to begin imagining designs. Second, the kit focused them on the mechanics of connecting the kit rather than design. Here we found, although the power of making is seductive, making everything is not for everybody. Also, in kit designs, we found that pre-existing shape and predefined purpose of the kit may, const may constrict or influence the design ideas rather than exploring what interaction is desired. Also, we observe that there is a distinct trend um, uh, in recognizing that kits may serve users well when they support leveraging skills, materials, and experiences. In response to this, we present the Internet of Things Unkit Experience. It is a co-design approach that engages people in exploring, designing, and generating personally meaningful IoT applications through the use of the IoT Ankit elements. It's a set of actuators, sensors, media elements, and the use of explanatory cards and people cards. The approach emphasizes the exploration of design through conversation, activities, and things, and people in situ. In our case, through in-home workshops. Moreover, the approach serves as a means to explore IoT design and IoT kit design. The unkit signifies utilization of a seemingly unfinished set of IoT components um, with a lack of connections leading to open interpretation represented by the purple yarn in this image. The IoT elements use a collection of sensors, actuators, and media elements like um, speaker and uh, display that are notably absent from many other kits. In the middle, is the Raspberry Pi, where the central unit is running that works as a Bluetooth gateway and hosts a visual programming interface that was used to provide a means of connecting up various elements. In our case, 
Uh, the initial vision of this kit is in enabling any person to prototype by themselves. But as the design evolved, we had compromise between flexibility and amount of functionality that, in the end, an expert participation by one member of the researcher team, we call the wizard, is necessary to write the JavaScript code or fix the configuration that allowed rapid prototyping of many possible scenarios. So in this way, the focus shifted to understanding how the kit gets used. We also use explanatory cards to concretize the idea of sensors and actuators, and we use people cards to help participants reflect on who they want to connect. The flow of the approach is as follows. First, um, we start with the setup, um, the setup of the un IoT unkit by the wizard, while other researchers show the, the participants the IoT prototypes examples that I showed earlier. Then this is followed by laying down the cards that we explain the IoT and its possibilities. Then there's the walkthrough. The walkthrough is where the participants lead the researchers to explore their home. Then the dynamic co-creation is where the participant's design idea is prototyped. Uh, the details of the process is in the paper, and in the interest of time, let me proceed to how we illustrated the approach and the interesting findings that we found. So we conducted two IoT Ankit experience in-home workshop that lasted for three hours each in the home of Anne, who is in her 80s, and Val in her 70s. Anne and Val are independent women and active members of their community doing a number of volunteer, volunteer works. The workshops with Anne and Val resulted to a lot of interesting findings, but let me share um, a few of them this afternoon. First, the approach was able to capture situated passions. For Val, it was during the walkthrough that she led us to her garden that her face lift, lit up and she um, eagerly showed us her prized possession, her vegetables and her fruits. When Val saw her tomato plant, she recalled, that one, I have a very big tomato. It was, of, it was full of pecks of the birds. Val is annoyed by the crows that prey her plants. She is so annoyed that when she hears the crows, she would quietly go to the laundry room with a window overlooking the garden, and using the pebbles that she has already prepared there, she throws it at the birds to shoo them away. Situated passions were captured as participants became engrossed and enthusiastic in telling us stories about their home, their activities, and interests. Val wanted to design an alert plant track to protect her plants from, from the praying birds. It's the combination of a motion sensor attached to the plant track that would then trigger a motor actuator to move the makeshift scarecrow. But this wasn't enough for Val. Val wanted more. She suggested to add sound so she would know if an event has, is happening. So Val didn't simply want the birds to fly away. She wanted a speaker to know when the device is activated so that she could peek through the window and watch the comedic and satisfying effect and have the option to throw pebbles when needed. As for Anne, who's passionate about unique technology for the home, such as a spraying mop, a complicated griller, or digital kettle, Anne chose a rather pragmatic aspect of her housekeeping how the IoT could help her know when moisture is building in her linen cabinet so she could prevent damp and mold. So Anne said she preferred sound over seeing a notification over a screen. So Anne's prototype is a combination of a moisture sensor connected to a speaker. In the approach, we also found how aesthetics of things context matter. An example is during Anne's dynamic co-creation of her moisture-sensitive cabin linen cabinet. When we asked what sound notification she, she wanted when her moisture was building up in the cabinet, she immediately declared, not a bird, because there are plenty of birds. I might not hear it. Then Anne suggested water sound. So we played sound of rain, a cascading water like this.
she initially liked it, and then later on, she changed her mind. She said, oh, I might not hear that one. I just think it, ha- it was the top or the dishwasher. Then we played a chime-like synthetic sound, like this. She was happy with that sound. It was taken up into the design. This shows that the importance of object and environment specificities as aesthetics qualities of the interactions became clear as our participants imagined their designs in C2. Additionally, we found that in ideas of how to connect with people in participants' lives, it may not happen instantly for various reasons. During the setup around the table, Anne briefly mentioned about her fractured relationship with her daughter and how it would be difficult to reconnect with her. But during the walkthrough, when Val saw the, um, the trees in her backyard, she said, oh, I have trees along the back. We've got new birds coming in. I could share it with my daughter. So even though the relationship with her daughter is fractured, they both love birds. And she commented that the ambient birdhouse could provide a good way to connect and share around birds, which is a common passion and a non-controversial topic between them. Here we see that relationships gradually revealed. We found that empathetic and open conversation around the dining table and then moving through the home gave a chance to pander, revisit, and reveal relationships and to imagine how the IoT might support, support this relationship in new ways. So through our exploration of the IoT and kit experience with older people, we offer the following insights into the co-design process and the design of IoT kits. In terms of embodied personal and creative interaction, by situating the design process to where IoT is envisioned to be used, like in the home, this increases the agency of the participants because it's in the home where their identity and personality are strongly reflected. We found that the participants' interest and the organization of their home is the best guide to steer the design process. And this led to design ideas that were far more personal and situated, more likely to consider their own environment and their relationships. Against automation towards artful integration. It is important to note that our participants neither designed a device that would track their health, that would monitor their movement, or that would automate tasks. For Val, she didn't want to be oblivious to the alert plant track's effect on the birds and wanted to to participate in the interaction. For Anne, her moisture-sensitive cabinet idea, she didn't want an automated drying solution, but she just wanted to know when she would open the cabinet door to, to keep it aired. Orchestration. The IoT Unkit experience approach is effective because of the orchestration of several factors, the participant, the environment where the the co-design took place, the malleable IoT elements, the cards, the research team themselves, and the wizard. The wizard is someone whom the participant can see and talk to and make the technology work for them. We found that it is important that kit components be adapted and appropriable to different environments. This allows the opportunity to explore aesthetics and to merge them with their own objects and materials. Different kits might have different foci to address particular sets of opportunities. Insights from IoT and kit experience workshops may be developed to find common combinations of elements to make kits that suit particular groups and particular needs. We can also imagine kits such as the UnKit that that consultant designers may use to work out product ideas with people, with the products then being tailor-made for a professional level of fit and finish for people. In conclusion, we contribute the IoT UnKit experience approach, an approach that empowers participants to lead the process, that emphasizes people contemplating and exploring IoT concepts in context, and that captures personally legible interaction and aesthetic quality. And the approach frees participants the burden of connecting up the kit itself 
And finally, it offers insights for a more situated and responsive approach to design of the IoT and its constituent kits. Thank you. We have around five minutes for questions. So I have actually have one question. Is uh, so I noticed like most of the IoT like scenarios this senior citizen have imagined are about automation. So I'm wondering if they are like uh, interested in other application scenarios like uh, quantified self or. Mm. Okay, um, so uh, the the two um, um, participants in the, uh, the the study actually, uh, we felt that it was more of an agency in their end of this of the design decisions that they made. For example, Val could have just said that, "Oh, can you make me a linen cabinet that just won't moist at all?" But she didn't. She decided to, okay, can you make me something that will tell me when moisture is happening? So, and then it's her choice what to do with that information. So similarly with Val, she didn't also say that, oh, make me something that will make the birds disappear altogether. But what she decided was that, oh, can, it was more of a playful thing even, a playful idea that she can still participate. So it was not fully automation. It was not mainly automation, but a lot. Um, it in the, their idea requires their participation and agency. So, what's the main difference between like the senior citizens' IoT needs versus like a general users' IoT needs in your observation? So we can. I, I believe that this can just be a start because whatever we find in um, in the workshops that we conduct with older people. Um, we feel that they, the lessons or insights from that can be rolled or um, sh um, uh, implemented as well with other kinds of users. It's just that working with older people, they are more, I feel that they are more um, consensuous, they are more um, wary of technology even, that we can have lessons in that to just not accept technology lightly and to have a critical eye of having them in our life. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thank I have a question. Oh, I hate when we have a hard time engaging the audience to ask you questions, so I don't want to hear my voice as much as I want you to have a, a question to, uh, to answer. Um, it's interesting, um, again, I'm going to be coming from an, an engineer's perspective about how do we understand what these kinds of solutions they design would be like when they're really put in place. And there are two concrete examples that, that uh, you're... You, that I want you to comment on. One, the linen closet. How much did the woman think about uh, um, how effective would the alerting mechanism be at the time where she could act on it? Uh, um, so designing something that was a sound, again, when she's not there, will be a sound that isn't uh, effective for her. The other one, which is a little more subtle, is the bird cage thing and how it might build a relationship. I could imagine that if someone who I have a, a ruptured relationship with somehow interfered with something that I liked otherwise, it might spoil the bird experience because I know who it's coming from. And these are kind of things that uh, I don't know that we ever have an answer until we put them in place to see them. And so I want you to uh, talk about how you get these designers to think about what this really would be like in practice and would it serve the purpose they want. Um, okay, first for the, the, the linen cabinet, so, um, as, as, I, as we explained, the workshop runs for three hours' time. So, and the value of the workshop is that we foreground what older people want in that moment of um, ideation and imagining of the IoT. So, it can be considered like a starting point. So, um, other design considerations beyond of what was, um, um, what we came up in that moment, it could lead to possible prototype and then later on be um, trialed in their home where things such as those, the concern that you mentioned, we will find out and possibly answer. But it was just for a three-hour workshop and what we appreciated in that moment is that it was their decision, it was my idea, and that it's, that's the value of the approach. As, 
I hope that answered the questions. For the second question, it was about the um, um, the birdhouse you mean in terms of mediating relationships. Is that what you meant? Ah, so um, it would, I couldn't speak for every relationship. It would be case-to-case -case basis. But um, I, um, in my knowledge, if there's a, a proxy in a way that it, the, in connecting a relationship, that's something that's not controversial, something that light, it, just like I seeing a bird from your backyard, then maybe there's hope of reconnecting, of the, uh, reconnecting the relationship. But again, it's a start of something that possibly would work or not, that it can be tested through a trial. But, and we are happy that the idea was not forced, but the idea came from the participant.